fall again. So now it's the average is about 2.91%. That's I, for a 30 year though. Yeah, I mean, look, 30 year mortgage, uh, I just had a guy in Blacksburg lock in for 2.5%. I think he had to buy down a point or something like that. Um, but he got a 2.5% interest rate. He's putting 5% down. He's not even putting 20% down. He's putting 5% down and getting a 2.5% interest rate over a 30 year term. I mean, that's literally free money. That, that's that's money, I mean, in our lifetime, if you if you can get a loan for that rate, now's the time to do it. You you want to be in the market with that type of rate because you're you're not likely to have that opportunity again. I mean, that's a literally a 50-year low rate. So, you know, and if you are a current homeowner and you want to take advantage of that, it's definitely time to refinance. It's definitely time to make a move one way or the other. So... Two and a half percent. I mean, it's just that's just crazy low. You need to be evaluating that opportunity if you're in the market. It's actually pretty crazy that he was able to uh, get that low of a percentage because he's like competing with like the average of like a 15 year fixed rate of uh, yeah. fixed mortgage. Yeah. So. So actually, I mean, if he could get that on a 30, I wonder what he could get on a 15. Like he should be able to get substantially lower on the 15 yeah. than the 30. But they just might be they just might be so desperate to keep the economy flowing that they're doing they're doing an incentive to take the longer loan you know maybe yeah. i don't i don't really know that but it just seems like that's crazy so what do you know what a 5 year hybrid arm is yeah, i didn't know what that was a 5 year a 5 year adjustable rate is something that typically will give you a better term in those 5 years but right now it's not Five, you know, these five-year adjustable rates is why we got into the 08 crisis, is everybody took these five-year arms, and when they adjusted, they adjusted to a rate that nobody could afford. And then, you know, they weren't being verified on employment, so they were just handing these things out like Skittles. You know, anybody could get it. So the five-year adjustable rate mortgage is still a viable loan for some people, but not right now. You get better on the fixed rate mortgages than you do with the uh, adjustables. So... You know, is is if that if the five year adjustable rate is your only in, way to enter a mortgage, then you might consider it. But if you can, can if you can do the fifteen or thirty year, uh, and you're getting the same rate pretty much, there's no reason to do the five year uh, adjustable. And we're gonna at some point we'll have Dave Sheeler come in. He's our preferred lender partner, and uh, he can talk more about you know what the five year adjustable rates are versus the fixed rates and what the advantages are. Um, He'll, he'll be our, our ultimate source for that. So, you know, in a later show, you'll meet Dave. Cool. Um, so now we're starting to see mortgage applications fall. Uh, so mortgage applications fell 2% uh, last week. And then the refinance index also fell 3%, but it's still 40% higher than the same weeks like one year ago. So it's still very high, but it is dropping. Do you think that's because there's like a huge demand for houses, but there's not a lot on the market right now? I honestly think that people getting their kids back to school have always had a drop in real estate activity. Mm -hmm. So as the country sends their kids back to whatever school they're going to, even if it's school from home, like everybody's kind of not focused in on their real estate needs. They're settling in for a time to get, you know, to get acclimated to the environment that they're going to send their kids to school in. So maybe that's it. Okay. Uh, but, you know, we do, uh, you know, we do have an uh, inventory shortage. I mean, we do. I mean, there's, uh, there's just nothing available. I mean, I've got a pipeline full of buyers that have no opportunities to get in. So it could be, it could be a combination of both, you know, because not everybody has kids, right? So, True. Um, so there could be a lack of inventory. But I think I think this is just the time of year that people slow down on that focus and go and focus on a couple of different things. I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. The article that I found uh, this information from said that uh, lenders are reporting that a strong demand for home buying is coming from a delayed activity from the spring. So do you think that it's like spring started, pandemic happened? So people weren't buying homes, and then they all came in at like the summertime, and now we're starting to see a decline because less homes, people going back to school. Well, we've had a year stuff. full of no inventory. I mean, mm -hmm. the inventory shortage has been through throughout the year and and it, it kind of got um, enhanced during the pandemic. Like, 
like everything kind of came to a screeching halt because they were trying to figure out, they were really trying to figure out how to navigate through the pandemic. So as soon as we figured out how to navigate through, everything ramped back up. I mean, everything really kind of took off again. So like coming out of like December of 2019, there just weren't that many homes on the market? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I gotcha. So, but like, so now we're seeing that homeowners are willing to blow like a majority of their budget on a home and go over their budget just yeah. to secure these like low interest rates. Right? Well, I think that's just a, a matter of fact through the annals of history. Like mm -hmm. people have a, people want to, I mean, if you look at people purchasing and their consumer behavior, they've been willing to go over their hopeful budget for the right product almost forever. I mean, that's just a, you know, if they find what they're actually looking for and they think that it's got the value, they're going to pay it. Yeah. So There's so, going to be a point, though, where it's like you spend so much on a house at that point, it wouldn't even be worth getting a, a lower interest rate because then you'd be either paying the same amount for a cheaper home with a higher interest rate, right? So I feel like... Well, are, like I said... Are people even, like, taking that into people, consideration? People are going to justify the little bit more house because of the interest rate, mm -hmm. simply because they get more. Yeah. You know, I think, I think that um, when it comes down to value versus like actually what they need, they can probably, and and it's so competitive too. So they get they get put into this sense of urgency that if they find something, even if it's a little bit above budget, they'll mm -hmm. justify it by the good interest rate, and they actually have enough house. Oh, okay. So yeah, I mean. There's a lot. Um, there's a lot of psychology that goes along on what, like, why people purchase the things that they purchase. Mm -hmm. Even though when they uh, originally set out to only pay this, mm -hmm. like, the the lack of opportunity that would be one. And then the fact is that they get they get an opportunity to get in with a lower interest rate. That's another justification to go a little bit above. Mm -hmm. So there's just like consumers mm -hmm. typically like ninety. I, I don't know the percentages, but. If I just map my own consumer behavior, I know that if there's a like if, when I bought my Range Rover, right? Mm -hmm. When I bought my Range Rover, I didn't want to spend forty grand on a three year old car, you know, I didn't want to. But when I seen it and I knew that that was the brand I wanted, it had some features that I didn't even anticipate. It was the it was the model above what I could get, and mm -hmm. I could walk out of there with no money out of my pocket to get it, and the payment wasn't that out of control. Sign me up. Yeah. Yeah. 64 percent, by the way, of how many people are willing to go over their budget to get to secure a lower interest rate. Yeah. Or at least that's what the article said. Right. I don't know. It just seems to me like I don't know. I'm very. I like to budget my money. Yeah. And I'm like always looking at it like every week. So I just feel like going over, um, just like going over budget doesn't make sense to me. I would just rather stay within my budget and just try to find a home to secure a lower interest rate. I think that's very practical and reasonable. Yeah. And a lot of people get into these situations, they get into these situations where they get emotional mm. and they forget their logic. Yeah. Okay. And, and you know, the product that they're looking for plus the salesperson creating the urgency that they need to close the deal. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of tactics going against logic. So you just got to really know, like you, as a consumer, you gotta if you're gonna if you're gonna walk purely on budget and logic alone, then mm -hmm. you gotta be willing to let that product that you want that you would be that you'd be ha highly happy with. You've got to be willing to not get it. Yeah, you gotta be willing to pass it. Yeah. So, so I don't know. That's just a discipline thing for me because like definitely right, like right if you can create that in your life, you'll be majorly successful. Yeah, because like right now, uh, looking at like a like another car, sports car, right? And you know, I was talking to someone over the weekend about it but it was like they didn't do the price that I wanted they couldn't answer a lot of my questions so just because of that I was like yeah I'm probably not going to get it yeah. you know just because like if you they just be, weren't if you can be me. happy walking away from the opportunity mm -hmm. man more power to you a yeah. lot of people can't do that yeah but see like people. that car for me that would be a lifelong car I'd keep that car forever but they weren't willing to work with me so yeah whatever so there'll be another one one day that yeah why yeah. not and like when I'm, I'll probably be even better equipped to buy that car, bigger down payment, sure. all this other stuff. So yeah, your investment portfolio would be a lot bigger at that point. Yeah. yeah. That's another yeah, that's another reason why <laughs> yeah. I didn't buy it because you know I knew Tuesday was coming, so <laughs> you know. 